Hi guys, welcome to this week's Urban Uncut and we are at episode 50. And we are nearly 50 for 50, aren't we? 50,000 subscribers for 50 episodes. It's good, isn't it? We're there, we're it's nearly good. there. We're, good. St we're starting to get this professional approach together. I hope you're all liking it. What we got this? <laughs> <Wait. laughs> he, he, he says after, after me, last week. After yeah. last week, me putting pictures of Pep Guardiola and, yeah. and Jason Statham and Pitbull and Bruce Willis. Just need to go and find Cy. I don't know where he's been hiding. Oh, Simon. Simon. Let's see where he is. Well, I wasn't going to bring that up because okay. we were being more professional. But anyway, last week I was away from the business for three days and Lenny decided to get back at me by, as you know, putting pictures of various bald guys <laughs> from media. There was more. There was more than just the fact that they were bald. There was, you know, there, there are similarities. I mean, I, I, I don't mind the pit bull thing with the sunglasses yeah. when you're tanned on yeah, holiday. Yeah, no. And I don't mind the Bruce Willis thing because, yeah, he's a bit of a geezer. That's cool, isn't he? But no, thank you everyone who has who's subscribed already. Hello to new subscribers. Thank you to everyone that likes and comments and just keeps it going the the right way. We're very very grateful. And I, you know there are big things to come with this channel. We've got a great team behind us now, um, and yeah, we just we enjoy it, don't we? Yeah, but we it, do. It's, it's um, yeah, it's good. We've got a lot more to come. What's going on this week? So we've got the new Range Rover Sport. We're going to have a discussion shortly. We've set up our Range Rover Sport meeting, yeah, which we don't know, well, we do normally do, but behind closed doors. So we're gonna have a little chat with you guys just to see what you, what our views are on the new Range First Rover impressions. Sport. First impressions, mm. whether it's good, bad, or the rest of it. I actually think it's really, really good. Mm. But I didn't say that this morning, did I? You didn't say that this morning, no. It, it's good because it's not that good, <laughs> if that it's makes It's good for us. I don't, no, I don't, I don't wanna be, um, negative towards it because it's undoubtedly going to be a fantastic car but when i say good for, because it's not good but it's just it just enables us to make our product yeah and, and when something's so inviting to give it something that it doesn't have a standard this is very sleek it's very smooth it's and it doesn't have that aftermarket aggression which our customer base wants. like the full size range rover it's a it's a safe design it and is safe and you know we came to the Last Range Rover Sport, the L494, probably two and a half years into the program. And I just checked this morning and we sold 480 kits. Really? 480 carbon fiber kits for the L494 Range Rover. Wow. And it was already cleaned up by one of our competitors in that market. And we managed to come in late, capture the market. We were hugely successful. So this is kind of, this is our car. So I'm interested to have this chat now with you about about what we're going to do. Cool. So that's that dissected. Sport done. Oh, right. oh look, I didn't realise. Oh, yeah, logos, nice. logos, logos, logos. So everyone. why have you, why have you bought? I like that, Tom. Product, product, <laughs> product placement. Nice. So why have you brought these down? What's right. So there? I've got a new car. I don't often treat myself. No, I, I know this, and I'm excited about this as well because it means that I get to borrow it one weekend. Well, I normally come to work either with someone or in a courtesy car. <laughs> yeah. People joke that I get more excited about the Golf GTIs that we run, GTDs the, that we uh, run as a The owner cars. of Urban Automotive sometimes turns up in the passenger seat of a T6.1 van and it's funny because people- Or a courtesy are, car. People in social media think that if you work for Ferrari, you drive Ferraris all day. No, if you, I if you work for Lamborghini, you, you get to take home Lamborghinis all the time. But, but- You, you are treating yourself. I'm, I've treated myself to a Lamborghini Urus. Perfect. Um, we've got our new NDS three wheels on it and it's stripped down ready for a wrap. I don't normally wrap cars. You don't, no. no I don't no. normally wrap cars. Or if you do, you play it fairly safe and just go for satin black. Yeah. 
That's right. And You're not going to satin black again. There's right? a roll of satin black out there, and everyone's basically trying to, talk, no. they're trying to talk me out of it. You've got to do... You've so, got, see, instantly... Yeah, right, so if, if, if those of you that don't know, there's a thing with me and peppermint green from my childhood when I was 17 or 18. Not childhood, <laughs> you're, you're Asbo, Lowood, Ford Orion, Tiger Stripes, Mint Green, the start of the modification game for you. Yes. Yeah? So, you, so when, I had, when I thought it was really cool and I had a really, really, really... But, to be fair, it was back then. It the best was thing really about cool that was the then. sound system. It used to set car alarms. <laughs> um, so we've got a few. We've got a few rap ideas. I'm going to run these past you, and I'll, I want you to tell me which one you think we should do. And I'm just going to do it. In now, the obviously, the we've already done the SVR V8 Herb that we took on the Yanomized Rally in that colour. Yeah, we is... did the Yanomized Talk. Where do you want that? Up there. You see that? There. 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 Nowhere. It makes it more difficult. Why okay, so we're right. that? Okay, so, so up there. No, I'll tell you oh, what, there. tell you what, down here is where it is then. If, it makes, if you want to challenge, it makes it more that, that, is, that is where the peppermint green SVR was. So, so that's already been done, but the problem you've got is that you have to consider caliper colour because you've got big yellow calipers on the Urus. Yes, it's got yellow calipers and this just will not go. Now, I've got, I've got a thing about green and I've also got a thing about brown. One of my favourite ever cars to be released was the Launch R8 Spider, which came in teak brown with alabaster white leather. Lovely. Amaz amazing launch spec. Yeah. And there's one that's really, really near it and metallic and matte, which I think that will look excellent. Yeah. Now, let me just shine a little bit of... Tom's nodding at me over there. Look, so it's very, it's very goldy. Yeah. So that, that, there's that one. There's the Enosa Tech gloss greens which will both go with yellow pretty well mm -hmm. um, we've got some metallic browns and some golds on that you know there's, there's also the super gloss gold as well which has got a real good tint to it ah. i love the idea of that but we've got to forget that because i yep. love the idea of it because it continues the theme of your first car the svr and but then look, moving on to the Urus. here's my yellow calipers and here's my green car Oh my God, <laughs> that is absolutely terrible. It looks like a sweet. Okay, well, get in the comments, guys. Tell us what color you think I should, I've got yellow calipers. It's a Lamborghini Urus with our full Nero kit. I'm actually putting four by four carbon on that, which is my favorite. It's the more jumbo size weave than two by two. I'm not a fan of Forge myself. Um, oh, yes, I'm, I'm what? Super gloss metallic. What, mamba green oh, that is? Yeah, it's like a nice sort of British yeah. racing green with yellow calipers. That'll look nice as well. Oh. What do you reckon, guys? Super gloss, mamba green, matte metallic brown, Tiffany blue, and what was the other one? Yeah. What do you reckon? Tell us what color you reckon. Hi guys, my name is Lloyd. I'm one of the parts and conversions manager here at Urban Automotive. Um, this is one of my customers' builds, which has been dropped off for a full wide track conversion. Um, so you can also drop vehicles to us and we can convert a completely standard vehicle. Um, this one has also gone ahead and had a full satin black wrap as well. Um, we'll take the cover off and we'll show you what it's had done. Okay guys, so as mentioned, this is a full wide track package. Um, so that consists of um, the usual sort of urban spoiler and light bar. Um, and then as you're going down the car, we obviously have our brand new Best of British top vents. It has the Best of British side vents as well, which we'll give you a close up of. Um, it has the wide track arches. Um, bit of an optical illusion, doesn't actually make the vehicle too much wider, but definitely adds a lot of aggression to the vehicle. Um, and then we've continued it down with the aero blades around the front as well. Um, this customer has also opted for the daytime running lights on the front, so the urban power cubes, um, and then obviously a full black pack to the vehicle as well to sort of tie in with everything. So this vehicle has had the full urban branding package as well. He's also gone a little bit different and done some 20 inch alloys on this car, which really suits the wide track package and also meant he could utilize the existing 20 inch all-terrain tires. To fit in with the look, he also wanted to retain his snorkel. So we've gone ahead and painted that gloss black and really ties in well with his uh, black pack to the vehicle. So another nice thing about this build is he's gone and put a fifth rear wheel on the back rather than doing a wheel cover. 
a little bit more expensive, but he's opted to keep, obviously, again, the 20 inch takeoff tire. Another nice thing about this car is it's actually retained as a van, so it's fully usable. And as you can see, we've loaded up with the takeoff wheels, which many people sort of sell to contribute to the cost of the build as well. Right, so we're basically, new Range Rover Sport was launched last night and we're having a range, we're being professional, we're having a Range Rover Sport meeting and we're discussing what's good, what's bad. Yeah. I think everything is good because it'll be new and improved. Yeah. <laughs> what are you lying for? <laughs> right, we're we doing this professionally then because that wasn't what you said this morning. Yeah, I know, but let me, let me elaborate. Okay. The reason it's really good is it's because, because I don't it's... think it's that good. <laughs> <laughs> so you mean it's good for us because it's... Yeah, I mean, they've, they've obviously they've carried on the Vogue lines, haven't they? They've, they've gone for this smooth finish. There's no accentuation, which is exactly what we do in a bumper. We pull the bumper out, we, we give it some mm. sportiness. And it is very round and smoothed round. off, isn't it? But there's, there's a little bit of a design mantra from everything across the range. Evoke. Discovery yeah, Sport. But that's the thing that bugs Range me. Range Rover Vogue. It, it, it doesn't look like, like a sport, does it? It looks like a Discovery Sport. Yeah. Which was, I think, 2019 when mm. the, the, the R Dynamic version of the Discovery Sport came out. And it looks very unmanly. Uh, yeah. Do you know what's, right what's highlighted this is how important number plate placement is? Because the both both the number plates front and rear now are a lot right lower, yeah. which makes it look like a, a Vela, and the rear just looks so. But look, this happens with every new vehicle launch. And we when, have this conversation every time. Same right, thing. Yeah. When the new M3 and the new M4 was launched, we looked at the front grills and we were both like, "Oh my god, what have they done?" And I'm still that. You way. still look. Yeah, 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 I I love it now. Who likes I, the kidney grill on the new M3 and M4? See, I, I yeah, I, I absolutely love Bad it. Bad decision, now. Tom. It's not, it's not that nice. It's not that nice. But with all new vehicle designs, you, the first instinct is, oh, it's new. I don't like it. But so I'm looking here at the the first thing that jumps out at me, the side vent. Very, very, very plain, which mm. is brilliant because it's got a suite that goes in across the door. We can run a carbon side vent all, all the way across. Back. Yeah, yeah. perfect. So we can actually go from wing to door on this one. That's the first thing that jumps out at me. Rear bumper looks like it's going to be tricky because it's really, really smooth. Mm -hmm. It doesn't it doesn't come out at all like the old one like you say the number plate was on the on the tailgate yeah and this is the number plates lower down bentayga did that last time as well yeah used to be up high mm -hmm. looked great on our launch bentayga and now it's really it's down low I and it looks why odd they've just started SUV. doing that but the know. good thing about the front bumper is that you should be able to change that and put maybe put that back a little bit higher up yeah we well, can get some intakes and some you know some depth to the bumper i suppose well. it also depends on what's behind that bumper whether the radiator is there whether they you know that grill needs to stay there for airflow yeah well, we'll consider all of that when we scan the car. Mm. So what was you saying was um, the good points of the car? One, it comes on 23s as standard. 23s yeah. as standard. And yeah. I, I've been having to play with a configurator Well, this not morning. as standard, standard option. Uh, sorry, a standard option, yeah, yeah. from factory, um, a factory option. And I was having a little play with a configurator this morning and the high spec cars, you can, you can spec forged carbon in the interior and you really? said, I thought you thought that Forge was like a I thought Forge was um, a Lamborghini like a, owned like a trademark yeah no I mean on their configurator they've got satin forged carbon interior trims which is fantastic for us because you imagine a kit, kit and not v, worry about the inside v, yeah. a V3 kit with satin forged carbon on the outside to match the interior is that what we're calling it a V3 well I assume we've gone V1 V2 V3 so yeah. yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I I am pretty excited. It's I mean, the new the new V8 engine, which is the BMW engine. Yeah. People say it's absolutely fantastic. Will it have the same like roar and roar and rasp as the yeah. existing V8? I don't know. I don't think it. I don't. You know, the V8 supercharged is that's going to be a classic engine now, yeah. isn't it? On the, in the SV, SVRs and the and the Defender. Well, the and Defender's what, obviously the last car to get it. And the the um, the baffle delete or the baffle modification we did for the SVR brought back this, the raw sound of the 16, 17 model year SVRs. The exhaust that we put on the Defenders have made that sound absolutely like awesome. the original SVR. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, now, can you sort of replicate that sound with a twin turbocharged V8? I'm not sure. You probably get more like 
gearbox farts when you change gear and stuff, but are you going to get you those popping bags? Farts, you you should, you shouldn't it? I would have thought. Um, well, that's the technical term, DSG, DSG farts. farts. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so as this has got 23 inch alloys as an optional ex extra, are you going to go for 24s like we're doing with the Vogue? I, I don't know. I don't know whether it's the right car. The Vogue definitely, because, just because of it's the size. It's a big car, isn't When it? we put the 23s on the Vogue, they, they didn't look that great. Um, 24s, we've got a new design, which we've patterned for the Vogue, but I'm assuming the, the, the bolt pattern and the offsets will be very, very similar to the Sport, because yeah. they always have been. So we'll probably be able to run that 10 inch wide, 24 inch wheel, and it'll probably go straight on. Mm -hmm. um, we've only ordered an initial batch of about 20 sets because we thought it would just be for the Vogue, but with the Sport coming out, we may increase that once we know that it definitely fits. So, so yeah, I mean, that's that's the new Sport. I don't, I'm, I'm, I, I am it's, excited. Yeah, I, am I excited. mean, it, it, ta it does take a week or two to process the design, have a really good look at it, but we're never gonna really tell until you see one in the flesh. Um, so I don't be, know when I don't know when actual cars are coming out. I know that I've had people call me already. What are you doing for your kit? I've had two phone calls already from someone uh, even asked me how much the kit was. I was like, it's only in my head. <laughs> I don't even know how much it is yet, guys. It's yeah. just in here. Yeah. Um, well, it's not even in here yet. Maybe the side the side vents for the carbon's done in my head, but that's about <laughs> it so far. Yeah. Yeah. So um, come in September, I think first deliveries of the sport are. So you would expect our kit to be out around Christmas time. I would expect. Uh, just working on the RS6, doing, getting the bumper down. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to sit on my stool, that's a bit more normal, isn't it? Uh, just doing the front bumper for the RS6, uh, done all the doors this week, done all the little bits this week. Nick's been on holiday, be back next week. Uh, no, not next week, tomorrow. Uh, get the sides done, get this finished, and get out. It should look pretty good, to be fair. Is that, is that loud? Hi everyone, so following on from last week's segment at the used car showroom, I thought I'd just show you this. So we do get some interesting part X's. Uh, this was against a new car this morning. Uh, it's a C63, I think it's a W204 is the model number. I thought they were a 6.2 V8, but obviously the 6.3, I think they're just over 6200 CC, they've rounded it up. Anyway, um, I'm going to go and see Brett, the used car manager, and see what he wants to do with this, because sometimes we retail these part X's, sometimes we just trade out of them. Now, I think this is a lovely thing, but does it fit our stock profile? I'm not too sure. It hasn't been prepped yet. Um, obviously, we've got a little bit of dirt on the tyres, but it's a lovely thing. It's a really straight car. The, the owner's had it for the last nine years, full service history, but I can't remember the last time I'd, I've driven one of these, so I think I might take the long way just to make sure everything's perfect. It's been a while since I've driven one of these and if you follow my Instagram or if you've seen the, the videos featuring my E-Class you'll know that I'm a bit of a Mercedes fanboy now. I'd probably describe this car as a future classic with everything going uh, hybrid or electric or even like adding turbos, naturally aspirated sports cars and supercars are becoming quite rare. So in 10, 15, 20 years time, is this gonna be worth a lot more money? Or did they make enough that, you know, it's quite popular, it's still gonna be plenty about? I'm not too sure, but do you know what? For a 10 year old car, it still feels so solid, still, still nice and new. The interior hasn't really dated a huge amount apart from the, the sat nav, but it's that noise. Here we are at Urban Approved Use. Here's Brett, the used car manager. Hi, mate, all right? How about you? I'm good. I bought you this lovely C63. What have you tucked me up with this time? <laughs> well, so this is what I wanted to talk what's about. What's missing and what's actually No, it, it, do you know what? It is really a lovely thing, but what I wanted to talk to you about is, 
Obviously, we're talking about retail cars, yeah. what we buy in, what we modify, what we put on the forecourt compared to what we just trade out of. And I think a car like this, sometimes we take a car like this in just to facilitate a deal, yeah. and then you'll just move it on in the, in the trade. Is this the right sort of stock profile for us? It's the perfect car if it was five years newer. Right, okay. So we'll stock anything up to five years or 50,000 miles. Yeah. We're a little braver either way. Okay. But this is 10 years old. Yeah. But immaculate in fairness. It's a lovely thing, and I said on the way over here, it's, um, it, it could be a future classic, couldn't it? You know, it's a 6.2 V8 or 6.3 V8. It's naturally aspirated with cars going electric and hybrid nowadays. Yeah. Could this be a, a, a future classic? So yeah, it's a ni nice straight thing. Not for us though to retail, but I did my job. I got the two keys, logbook, clear HBI. That's amazing. That is the first, Lenny. It's one Normally of my I get no logbook. One key if I'm lucky. Half the bit's missing off it. The only thing wrong with this car, Lenny, isn't quite as white as your teeth. Other than that, she's a beauty. Right, and on that note. Is that it? Is that enough? <laughs> yeah, no, on that note, yeah, I'm going back to the safety of HQ. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder why your business had you for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> nice one, Brett. I'll see you on the next one, yeah? See you later, mate. Cheers, mate. Ta -da. Right, so that's me going over to manufacturing to get an update from the guys. Uh, they've been working hard installing the machines and, you know, refurbing everything, painting everything so it comes up to urban standard. We've installed the press brake, we've installed the plasma cutters and things like that. So I need to get an up update from those guys. We obviously made a big investment in the acquisition of all of this equipment and the company. So we need to sort of get a hurry on and see whether, you know, we can start pumping out steps. On that note, we've got the new Range Rover over there. We've got a, another car in for sort of fit up on some steps. We've finished the brackets. I just need to go over and sign off, on, like do final sign off on that as well. And I've took the opportunity to take the journey over there and, and run out in the, the, the new XRS for a good sort of 20 minutes, half an hour. And all I can say is I think you guys are going to be absolutely blown away by this car. I'm sat in the, in, the, in the driver's seat, obviously. We've got the, the flat bottom steering wheel. It's got sort of a chunky, oversized feel to it, which is amazing. It's got the carbon center with a branded XRS in the middle. We've got the opulence of carbon all around the cabin. We've got handles, we've got uh, the, the fascias on the dash, the arms for the center console, all finished off with nice red bolts. And this flat bottom steering wheel is something completely unique to us. We've designed it, we've tooled it. And I think that the biggest thing for me is the Louvre bonnet, which we've not actually showed anyone yet. It's 100% carbon. It's got four carbon Louvre vents on it. And the view that you get from sitting here is just epic. It's, it, it makes the whole driving experience something special. And just because of what you can see out the front, you've got the head-up display here, and then you've got the Louvres in, in the top. And once we reveal this, once this prototype is finished, it still needs its branding. It's got no like exterior badging, or it's, you know, it's not got the urban badges on the bonnet. But once we release this, I, I just think you know we've sold I think about 17 or 18 from the 65 limited run that we're building. So once it's released, I think you guys are going to be absolutely blown away by it. So that's me. Quick blast around in the XRS, and then over to manufacturing so we can get an update from those. Right, so here we are at manufacturing and a lot has changed since we last came over. Now we've got a lot of the machines installed, we've got the extraction for spraying the steps, so we've got the extraction for the P rim machine, we're building shells for steps as well, so there's so much going on. And I'm gonna grab Reese so he can give me a rundown of everything that's working, not working, and coming through now. Reese, Swift Cut Machine, this is one of two that we got, yeah? Yeah, one of two, so this is a smaller machine. We've also got one twice the size. So basically, this one's all powered up, working. We've been cutting brackets out for the new Range Rover. Okay, yeah, so we've got the new Range Rover steps done now. I've just got a sign off, we'll show you shortly. Um, that's basically all of the brackets done. We've just got to basically sign off and then send them to powder coat and yeah. then we're done. So how long do you reckon before? Probably we... a week or two. So one week, if you've got a new Range Rover and you want fixed side steps for your car, just get in touch uh, and we can we can look after you. So Swift Cut. 
Yeah, so the Swift Cut basically takes a program that I've drawn in 2D CAD yeah. and basically works out each um, sheet dimension to then cut out each part. So the program basically economizes it and put it all together to use as little sheet as possible. So you get oh, less so, scrap. So it, will, it nests it all into place then? Yeah, so if you come over to the computer, you can see where it nests it together. So it basically puts all the parts as close as it can together. Uh, right, so we've got minimal wastage on the, on the steel that we don't use. Yeah, yeah exactly that. So you can see all the, um, the green lines is what it's gonna cut and the purple lines is where it travels from one part to the next, turning the plasma on and off. So basically this is for flattening all the just flattening, not bending. No, no bending. So this just flattens the tubes out. So this is the 90s and the 110s. And the 110s. And then basically we use the bigger press brake, the ones we've just finished off bending. painting, to flatten the T6 tubes. You know, the really long ones. Ah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got some tooling that basically goes all the way in that and then that will um, flatten the long ones as well. And then we also use the two press brakes. So we set them up for two different things. So that one will do the long sheets with the 90 degrees in it, and that will do all the short things. So like the defender pad inserts oh, with the short bends. Yeah, little ones. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah go in this one. So I can show you this quickly. Sorry about all of the tooling in the way. We're literally just finishing up, restoring them, and getting them working again. Yeah, so, so obviously when these came in guys, they were basically, there was green and blue and red and all the rest of it, and we're trying to get them all black and uniform to the brand. So we'll have obviously branding on the machine, so when we do future videos showing you like real core manufacturing process, it's gonna look nice and crisp and nice and neat, but you'll see in the raw footage at the beginning. Yeah, literally this is the start. So at the moment, you can see the yellow beams, that is a light beam, so when you put your hand through here, it makes the red light go off. So uh, it basically so it means you couldn't put your fingers in the press until it's ready to press this machine. So for health and safety purposes, this basically stops anyone being too near the machine and the press brake coming yeah, down and yeah, hurting yeah. things away. Like. Yeah. So what the process so is... So I'm inside the beam. You're inside so, the beam, so, so I can't yeah. yeah. I, I've literally just got a little, little bit of test material now. So we set the back stop, put the test material in, and we want to be on the centre of the machine as it presses. And I've got to stand outside the light and press the pedal down, and that'll bring the bottom of the machine up to the top, and then slowly it will bend the piece of metal. Wow, nice. it bends it like butter. It bends it like butter, literally. It? Right, so that is the piece of material bent. I mean, I know it's only a bit of metal, but that is super cool. That is really cool. Because everything to be engineered and built and manufactured by us in the UK is important because yeah, it's a focus on quality, it's a focus on giving a customer a sidestep that lasts as long as it possibly can because you've got to remember it's down at the bottom of a car, it gets pummeled with stones, yeah. you know, and some sidesteps take a real beating. So, so yeah, it's exciting. I know this will be boring for some people, it'll be amazing for others and just so, you know, you know, some people will just think, oh, it's just a chunk of metal, but it's a big thing for us to make this ourselves. Right, so New Vogue, I'm just looking at this face on. Looks absolutely perfect, runs really, really nice with the sideline of the car. Yeah, it follows the shape really nicely and then yeah, it mirrors it yeah. the other way, yeah. so that's why it's set in that position. The now. length is good, and obviously the, the most important thing for me, I'm quite finicky about where it sits on the car. So if we open the car, Hey, yeah. Look at him grinning, he's grinning. It sits absolutely perfect on the inner sill of the car. So when you look, you don't see ground through the gap. So yeah, so if we check on the back door as well. Should just fit in. Absolutely perfect. So we've obviously got the, the under trays down there. Because when we install the side steps, there's an element you have to just trim the, the under tray out to get the brackets in, which is exactly the same as what they do with OEM. And for those that were asking last week, OEM is original equipment for manufacturer. So basically when we refer to something that's standard or stock, we call it OEM. So that's the steps done. Yeah, all done. Um, like I said, we're back to HQ now, see what Lenny's up to. So I'm very excited once again with a, I refer to your old Ford. Dave, one of our valeters, he's got an amazing Ford collection and he's just kept them. You know, he's, he's just collected all these old Fords. This one, Mark II, Ford Fiesta XR2, D-Reg. And I was just saying to the boys over here, look, we've got, we've got two Auruses here, we've got an RS6, we've got a G-Wagon, we've got Defenders, we've got Range Rovers. 
But when something like this comes in, I just get so excited because it's just pure nostalgia. Me and my mates used to just run about in these, like the black Escort XR3 that we featured a couple of weeks ago. But this one's all original. It's done 90,000 miles, which for you know a car in like 1986 is not a huge amount. Um, all original apart from it's been lowered and it's got a, um, an exhaust and a K&N panel filter. But look, 13 inch pepper pot alloys. We're fitting 22, 23, 24 inch alloys and these are 13s. And back then, they just looked normal. They looked amazing. But I just absolutely love it. It's pure nostalgia. Have a look at the interior. <laughs> it's again like the Escort it's by no means immaculate or mint but it's a usable classic that you can just enjoy so fresh MOT on it he's just brought it in I thought I'd grab Tom and the camera just so you can have a quick look at it because these sort of cars are the foundation of you know why me and Simon are you know so into cars Right guys, so that's it for this week. Now, this is about the sixth take that we've done of this. Everything was going absolutely perfect. All I had to do was tell you what colour I want you to get in the comments and tell me about my wrap. I had to tell you about this Bentley GT. Which is available, contact me if it's Yeah, which is available, interest. but your man Cam behind the cam basically just bald shamed me <laughs> and said that I can't stand in front of the window because of my head, because it glares off the camera. And not a <laughs> and then I took five minutes getting off off the floor from rolling about with laughter. So I've tried to do this take six times now, but because apparently I'm bald and I'm trying to keep my way out of the look. So out of right. The light. <laughs> right, so available Bentley. Available Bentley. Contact me. Contact Lenny if you want it. Here's an edit of that. Colour you're doing your Urus? Yeah, tell me what colour I'm doing my Urus. Thank you for um, sharing, liking, and subscribing. Please and if you haven't, do it. To subscribe, and I think that's it, isn't it? That's it, and we'll see you next week. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that was better. <laughs> good, 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 good. Stop recording. Oh.